Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and this is not back to school week. Yay! We are on day four, which is unit studies and other subjects or group subjects. So someone asked me the day, oh, do you do any history and geography with the children? And I was like, all in good time, all in good time, my friend. So this is covering that. So firstly, um, our schedule that we have um, is very child led when it comes to other subjects other than English, maths and science. Um, I encourage them to do these things but I don't force them because I do believe in the ethos of unschooling, of autonomous learning and I do think that that's really important. Like why should I force them to learn about the Romans when that doesn't actually have any impact on their life right now? Um, for example, or the Stone Age, like, yes, it's important to know where we came from, but that's tens of thousands of years ago in some cases. So what's what's the point? I struggle learning things that I feel like I don't <clears throat> that don't have any any I don't have any interest in and I don't feel that they have any relevance to my life. So I'm not gonna force that on my children. And that can be a bit of a controversial thing. I know people who are more school at home orientated or who are very um um think that mainstream schooling is a better idea especially people in our family and friend groups I think that that's the wrong choice but they're not home educating so you know and they're my kids so they don't get an opinion anyway <laughs> so I wanted to show you some of the things that we're going to be using some of the resources and some of the different things that we're adding in this year that we've never done before so um I may have shown you these before I can't remember but I found these online um Evan Moore they are um sorry I'm yawning <laughs> they are US curriculums. We've got geography and we've got history. So this is K to one, sorry, K to two, which the UK equivalent would be year one to year three. So that kind of encompasses my big two. Um, I do get Albert involved in this a little bit, but not hugely because he's just a bit too little. So um, the there's four sections in this book at the front here in the contents. We've got map skills. Oh dear, what did I just drop out there? Map, map skills, land forms and bodies of water, continents and oceans, and around the world with animals. Now this should take us three years to do because um, that's, you know, that's what it's aimed for, but it has this lovely colourful map inside, it has all sorts of activities, and really you only need to do like a page each session to really get some good knowledge in. Um, if you go to their website, um, which I will leave in the comments, you can flick through the books and you can flick through all of the different age groups as well. Um, I'm gonna be, this is gonna be like in our looping basket that we've talked about before. Um, if you look up the video here, looping basket, we talked about that last year in Not Back to School Week. Um, so the kids can just, there's no prep needed. They can just pull it out and we can do a page all I need to do really is photocopy the pages so I keep the book pristine um, ready for when Albert wants to use it in the future and um, just photocopy the page that the kids want to do. Um, but yes, so we're going to be keeping on with that. Now how our unit studies are going to work, we're going to be doing unit studies for two weeks and at some point in there I will pop pop in this and say hey should we fancy, do you fancy doing something like this and um, we'll make you know a bit of busy work really because sometimes they are just like oh, I'm bored and they don't want to sit and do maths and English or they've already done their maths and English and I'm like well why don't we uh, just whip out some geography and they're like oh okay then and um yeah so this will be in like our busy in our busy box or our looping basket whatever you want to call it so the other one with the Evermore is historic civilizations or ancient civilizations sorry history ancient civilizations and this one is grades one to three so that is two to that's grade one is, is year two so that's year two to five year two to four sorry year two year three year four this is kind of the age um grade grade one equals year two in the uk so um it's hard to work out like my brain doesn't comprehend um so in here we've got again you've got these are lap book style projects in here but they call them pockets so you've got seven pockets you've got what is history ancient mesopotamia ancient egypt ancient greece ancient rome ancient china and ancient aztec world now i got this just to see how the kids felt about it but they aren't hugely interested um but there are some really cool fun activities you can see an example on the back there coloring in little stick figures and things like that so again it's in the looping basket and if the kids want to 
whip it out and have a quick go i don't need any prep apart from again photocopying and cutting stuff out um which i can do if they go oh can we do that later i'm like yeah sure i'm just whip it out but again i'm not hugely forcing this upon them because um our unit study schedule this year does include lots of history and geography that they have picked themselves um and i'm way more keen on doing that than i am anything else i'm just getting up my schedule so i can read you the unit studies in a moment excuse me i'm so tired <laughs> so while i do that let's talk about art because i do think art is really important um and i do i do do i think that i don't really give them an option to be creative like they're very creative anyway so but i do encourage it um encourage it heavily because oh hang on i've just realized there's no completely wrong place um so this is the curriculum that we've been following we dip in and out of it as we go and it's called meet the artists again um i can add the link in here i'll add the uh, add ag ag there we go add the link into the description so it starts off with frida carlo self-portraits then you've got van gogh van gogh if you want to pronounce it that way uh, still life andy warhol printmaking pablo picasso cubism barbara hepworth sculpture and so on and so on and it's a 20 week thing but i tend to um we tend to focus on kind of one um every, you know one every two weeks or something like that and then actually it becomes a much longer thing um um yeah it's mainly it's very literary lit it's very literary heavy it's for you to read to them really um and then do activities so for example uh, there's questions as well which my kids really didn't enjoy so there we go look you've got like i guess some flowers there and um it says can you turn the flipping page there we go so it gives you a biography of van gogh which my kids were really interested in but then it asks you questions um and there's some bits in there that are a bit beyond my kids they were a bit like mm, i don't really care i don't really want to have a conversation about it um but then the art project bits that they liked so we really read about van gogh we looked at some of his pictures online and then we did the art project and that's it we didn't do the rest of it and it's very easy to just do that with this you can just pick and choose what you do and what you don't do um oh i got where's the other one i just realized oh my goodness a screwdriver just fell off the thing so the next thing and that just reminded me i hadn't put this in the pile was exploring nature with children and i have talked about this before but we will be doing this again um this is one that i have very beautifully bound and stuff and We'll, we'll start following this again um we again we dip in and out of it we kind of go oh should we do a nature study or and and again it's kind of every two weeks maybe we'll pick this up and go let's go do a nature walk let's do or oh, what is it this week um it's for example oh it's the autumnal equinox we'll probably do it then when it's uh, specifically around the sabbats we usually pick this up so um again but you don't have to follow it every single week you can dip in and out of it which i really like again the link to this is in the description um it's very very good value and you just use the same thing year after year after year we oh, sorry <laughs> we can talk more about nature journaling in another video and why we think it's really important um yeah so year long curriculum this one and it just you just follow it all the way through so the next thing we are introducing is poetry tea time and i will do a video on this fully where we talk about it more um and you can watch us doing it um in in a, in a later stage in a couple of weeks time but i've bought i just bought this um 100 best poems for children chosen by children and chosen by children so um there's loads and loads of different people in here you've got dr seuss michael rosen william shakespeare um william wordsworth alan olberg lewis carroll roald dahl um not many women unfortunately looking at this there's lots of there's lots of men in there but you know we won't hold that against them um so you've got things like there were different themes there was one here that i just saw that was about um, firework night there's one here about fairies 
all sorts of things. So we're going to sit and do poetry tea time probably only once a week where we're going to read a poem and or read a couple of poems together just to introduce them to poetry and have a tea time. Again, we'll talk about more of that in a later video in a couple of weeks time uh, when I've got it all set up and ready. So the next thing we're doing for kind of a group subject is Greek myths. Now a lot of pagan stories um, have Greek mythological um, stories in them, um, whether you look at them as a true story to work from or whether it's a fable, it doesn't really matter, but we are going to be looking at Greek myths. If I can find a children's book about Celtic myths, which is more, you know, like British based, um, then I will do that as well. But I haven't found one that I like yet, so um, we, it goes from the birth of the gods all the way to, what have we got, Odysseus here. I think it's Odysseus. Yeah, oh, um, Circe the Sorceress, the life of Achilles, you've got all sorts of things in here. So we're going to read those and we're going to maybe draw our own stories and, you know, draw our own pictures of the people doing the things in as a, as a, just a reminder of the stories we read. Um, so the kids are really excited to do that. Oh, a really heavy book though. Again, the link, that link um, I've added to the wish list that is in the um, description you can go and you can get the Amazon link for that. I've done it in a wish list because when I tried to just write the individual links they were massively long and I don't I'm not on the affiliate scheme so I couldn't do a small link and it was driving me insane so I was like I'll just put it on the wish list and then you can just open it up yourself and buy it. Um, there is not an option to send it to me there's no address attached to it so if you buy it it'll come to you. Um, you can't send it to me, which I made sure I did on purpose, so no one accidentally sent me anything or anything like that. So the last thing, and again, we'll talk more about this and the benefits of this in another video, and that is read alouds. Um, again, we've been dabbling in different different styles of home education for a really long time and working out which bits fit us, which poetry tea time, read alouds, that sort of thing. Excuse me, I'm just so tired. Hmm. Albert still wakes me up in the night, so I'm tired. Um, and re we've chosen these read alouds. We've also only chosen six. Um, some some ideas are that you do 12 and you do one a month, and we just didn't want to commit the children and I to reading a whole book in a month together. Like sometimes we just don't feel like it, so then we go weeks without reading it, and then we pick it up again. So we wanted to just kind of say six a year that we read together, and I've picked them from a Charlotte Mason list, so they're living books. Um, I wanted kind of real books that had real, real issues, I guess, There's things that were going to teach the children something with their story, with their message, but also um, be wholesome, not hugely scary, something that all of us could enjoy together. Classic books is really what I was going for. So uh, we are reading Charlotte's Web at the moment. We haven't got too far in. We're probably a third of the way through. We're enjoying it so far. Um, and yeah. We, I actually, we actually, our new, new guinea pig, Wilbur, as you saw, was named after the pig in Charlotte's Web. Um, so yes, we uh, we are really liking it so far. Our next, but we're not in, these aren't in any particular order. We're not going to read them in any particular order or anything like that. But um, the next one we've got is Mary Poppins, the original story. I've only ever watched the films, as have the children. We've never ever read the book oh, i've never read the book so we're going to read mary poppins together which we're quite excited about because they all love the original film and then the one with emily blunt um the julie andrews version and the emily blunt version they really like it so we're excited to do that then we've got uh little house on the prairie i've heard good things about the book i know that there's a um a show isn't there little house on the prairie i've never seen it and i've never watched this so we're excited to give this a go as well um, then we've got The Prairie Thief, which is says a delightful mashup of The Little House on the Prairie and The Spiderwick Chronicles. This is quite a new book, it's not compared to the others. Um, it says 2012, which is the year that Charles was born, so it's not an old book, but um, everyone I've said is you know is pretty pretty enamoured with it. I've just realised that um, so far three of the people on here are, um, are women three of the authors we've got quite a few lady authors in here which is nice um and then we've got 
Alice in Wonderland and The Adventures Through the Looking Glass. Again, we watched the films, but we've never read the books, and I thought that would be interesting. I did read a children's version of the book when I was a kid, but I've never read the whole thing. And um, the Alice that Lewis Carroll based this on is actually buried in a church in the New Forest, so um, we're, we feel like this is a you know, this is a new forest book. We should definitely have a read of that. And then finally, we've got The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. Again, I've seen both of the um, series or films of The Rape of the Railway Children, um, one where Jenny Agatha is a child and one where Jenny Agatha is the mum. Um, so, um, before Call the Midwife. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to actually read the book because I've never, um, never read it with them either so the children are excited and they do love trains and they do love the kind of the story of the railway children so we're going to read all of those together we're not going to do any kind of book study on it really um i am going to get the kids to do a review afterwards probably a video review for the younger two for bessie and albert um, but charles will write it um so yes those are those bits now um the other bit is so this is our uh, unit study list i've got it up so as I said, we're going to be doing um, them over two weeks, so then we can just pick them up as we go. We don't have to be like, oh, we've got to get it all done in one week. We can just go, oh, we're doing it two days a week this week, three days a week that week, or whatever, you know, depending on how our life is. Um, so the things that I've chosen, the thing oh, I haven't chosen them, the things that the kids have chosen, Charles and Bessie and Albert only chose one each, and the rest of Charles chose because they were like, they didn't have a lot they wanted to learn. And that does show their age, um, or their emotional age as well. So Albert's only four and a half. He's not really, he's interested in what he's interested in. He's not really interested in anything else. And Bessie, although is seven and a half, is still quite little. So um, she's more like five, I suppose, in her head. Um, so it was important that she, she picked something she wanted to pick and that was it. And then Charles, who's nine, he had a lot more ideas and gave gave me loads and loads of material some of which was really surprised me and I was like oh well I've never even learnt about that so that's going to be interesting so we're going to do this so I've also added a few things in where we're going to learn about the seasons and we're going to learn about the sabbat that is attached to it and we're going to go into more in depth and talk about that so the first thing that they wanted to learn about was London was our capital city and we are hoping sorry <laughs> we are hoping to go to London for the weekend after my birthday I am 31 this year and we are hoping that we will um, go to London for the weekend um, my birthday is on a Thursday this year and I've got rainbows in the afternoon and I've been instructed I must be there by the rainbows um, <laughs> um, so yeah we're hoping to go to London for the weekend just the Friday and the Saturday um and do things like the national history museum and maybe go on a tour so we're gonna like plan a route and go and see we've got this um london hunt checklist um i'll include the link uh, below um that the kids are really keen on doing which uh, most of those things are reasonably close by i think we could probably walk them if we wanted to but we might um we'll probably take the tube um, for bits that are a little bit further away rather than walk all that distance I'd be exhausted um, get our oyster cards uh, we've got a couple of we, my husband and I have some oyster cards that we need to um, restock and then we'll get the kids um, the big kids one as well so they uh, they can they get free travel anyway but then when you've got it they're kind of proof and then they'll, it'll keep until they're like 11 so um, yeah so we're gonna learn about London and as I said the hunt checklist is in the description so you guys can um, see what we're gonna be going up to and we will film as well while we're there then the second is Autumn and Maybon. Now, um, Maybon falls at the end of the year. The Christian equivalent is Harvest Festival. Um, it's essentially the same thing, but obviously there's no Jesus or anything like that involved. Um, so we're gonna be talking about Autumn and Maybon. Again, we will share that with you, share Maybon with you because it's quite exciting. It's a lovely time. It's our last um, Sabbat before or holiday before Samhain, which is the biggest one of the year, and we're very excited about that. Um, so then the next unit study we've got is oh, the ocean. Uh, Bessie just said the ocean. I want to learn about the ocean. So we're going to learn about the ocean. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to learn about the ocean yet, but um, what I like to do is get the children to have a question, and then we answer that question. Um, so ba Bessie's question a little while ago <laughs> me. was do penguins have teeth and how do they hunt and um, so we answered that question 
with um, some research. She didn't do anything about it, but she did get the answer, which was, so she learned something, which was good. Um, then our next one is Ancestors and Samhain. So Samhain is our um, last harvest festival. We had one in August, which was about the wheat harvest. And then you've got like the, the main harvest festival, which is Maybon. Samhain is like summer, it's called, it's the, the direct translation is summer's end. Um, so it's a celebration that all of the harvesting is done now and we're heading towards the dark times of the light being um, less and it usually coincides with daylight, say, daylight, 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 daylight savings time as well so you know you suddenly see that it's dark really early so um, it's also all about our ancestors and how all of your ancestors have to have lived their lives and done all the things so you could exist and we kind of talk about that and give thanks for our ancestors um, then we were going to learn about mazes. Now, Charles has recently um, got a new pet who we will introduce to you um, in due course. And um, the, the pet, new pet actually is going to have their own YouTube channel because Charles really wants to post videos of them. Um, and so to give you a little clue, the, the topic is mazes because uh, Charles wants to make mazes for this pet to enjoy um, because these, this particular animal is very, very clever and enjoys and needs lots of exercise um, for someone so small. So um, mazes are a really good way to do that. So he wants to learn all about all the different kinds of mazes and we're going to try and tie in a trip to somewhere that has a maze. Um, not a maze maze because it would be too late for that. It'll be November time, we're going to do that, but like a hedge maze, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so he can kind of design his own mazes for this pet. Um, next, Albert wants to learn about space, specifically spaceships. Um, he's going through like a Benny from the Lego movie phase where he's like, spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. <laughs> so um, he wants to learn about spaceships. And I've kind of been like, space and spaceships. Like, let's make this a bit more interesting for the other two as well. So we're going to be um, learning about the solar system, learning about maybe do a bit of constellations, um, because that's going to be at the middle of November so it'll be quite easy to wrap up warm, take a flask of um, hot chocolate and go and sit at the paddocks and stargaze because uh, there's no light pollution at the paddocks at all, there's no street lights <laughs> anywhere for a, quite a distance either side, like a mile either way there's no street lights so um, we're going to be looking forward to doing some stargazing there. We once saw Elon Musk's satellites which are very cool. Um, next, Charles wants to learn about volcanoes. Um, we've we keep saying, oh, we're going to do volcanoes, we're going to do a project on volcanoes, we're going to do volcanoes, and then it never get around to it. So I'm going to make sure that that is a thing we do. That's going to be the end of November. And again, all of these we're going to share with you in videos, I hope. Um, and uh, then we're going to be learning about winter and Yule coming into the middle of December, because Yule is the 21st of December. Uh, we're very excited about that. Because <laughs> Yule is when we give each other presents. Um, then Charles wants to learn about World War Two, and I love that era of history. That's the era of my my grandparents. They were children and young adults, depending on which one, um, which grandparent. Um, and I remember hearing lots of stories about um, World War Two in the local area as well, because they were all local. Um, some of them were in the New Forest and some of them were in um, Bournemouth so they do remember um, well they did remember obviously because there's only one left of my grandparents now um, they did remember a lot of things which they told me because I was very interested in it when I was a child so um, we're, we will sit and talk about that and do some projects we might um, you know do some World War II recipes and we might uh, try rationing again for a week and all that sort of stuff um, so next this one surprised me a lot Charles said, I watched a video where there was, which on YouTube, where there was a French queen and she said, let them eat cake. I'd really like to learn about her. And I was like, Marie Antoinette? <laughs> That's the French Revolution. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to learn about the French Revolution. And I've never learned anything about the French Revolution. So this will all be brand new to me. Um, and I'm running out of battery. So I'm going to talk faster. Next we're going to learn about Imbolg, which is another Sabbat for us in the winter. Then we've got the Wild Wild West. Um, again, I've never learned about the Wild West in America, or, or anything really about American history. Um, so we're going to talk about the Wild West. Pioneer days. Um, of all the things that he could have picked. And I was like, British history? And he was like, no, we're doing American and French history too. I'm like, okay. Um, and then we're going to do the Amazon rainforest because Charles wants to learn specifically about animals in the Amazon rainforest but we're also going to look at plants and stuff as well. Then spring and Ostara and then we haven't got any more apart from our usual sabbats throughout the year. 
so we will add those a bit nearer the time. Okay, so I'm going to go before the battery dies. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow for, I think, it's, uh, we're going to talk less about curriculum and more about things that we like to do with screens. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye!